So he started carpooling with a female coworker, and since then, the distance between us grew every day. To can I hold on to the man I love before it's too late? Should I set clear boundaries with my boyfriend regarding his quickly blossoming relationship with a female coworker? So the evening air was crisp, holding a hint of autumn's chill as I walked across the sprawling campus of the university. It was a time marked by youthful dreams and scholarly pursuits, a period that now seems both distant and vividly close to my heart. It was here, amidst the hallowed halls and buzzing student stooners, that I first met Brian. So he was like me, a newcomer to the intricate world of graduate studies, eager to carve out a niche in the academic world. Our initial encounter was as unremarkable as it was fortuitous, occurring during a mandatory orientation for incoming students. I remember the room was overly warm, filled with the nervous energy of dozens of students. Tryon sat next to me, introduced by a mutual acquaintance who had prematurely left to answer a call. Left alone, we struck up a conversation, initially threading through the safe territories of our academic interests and backgrounds. He was a student of environmental science, passionate about renewable energy, while I pursued sociology, driven by a desire to understand the undercurrents of human interactions. Our fields were different, yet complementary, a theme that would underscore much of our future together. In the weeks that followed, our paths crossed with increasing frequency, often at the university library or during various group projects. Our friendship blossomed effortlessly. We shared long debates over cups of lukewarm coffee, challenging each other's perspectives and often discovering our shared values. Tryon's intellect was matched by his kindness and humor, a combination that pulled me into a circle of comfort and laughter. So there was an ease between us, a silent acknowledgement of mutual respect and admiration that deepened with time. As our second year of graduate school commenced, circumstances led us to become roommates. So the decision was practical at its core, motivated by our compatible living habits and the convenience of sharing rent. Of time to rent, so yet living together brought a new depth to our friendship. Our evenings were filled with shared meals and continued debates, our academic passions spilling over into every conversation. We were both ambitious, driven not just by personal goals but by a desire to make a meaningful impact on the world. It was during one particularly poignant evening, as winter whispered through thin walls, that our relationship took a romantic turn. We had been discussing a group project when a sudden power outage plunged the apartment into darkness. In the soft glow of candlelight, our conversation shifted from academic to personal. Vulnerabilities were shared between shadows, and I saw in Brian a profound emotional depth. The line between friendship and something more blurred, and we found ourselves drawn together not just by intellectual compatibility, but by a burgeoning emotional connection. Our transition from friends to partners felt as natural as it was inevitable. We continued to share an apartment, now not just as roommates, but as a couple. The dynamic shifted subtly. Where there had once been two beds, there now stood one. Our discussions still ranged from the professional to the profoundly silly, but they were now punctuated by moments of tenderness, by shared smiles and soft touches that spoke of a deeper bond. And when graduate school ended, reality ushered in challenges. We found jobs in different states, and for a brief period, our relationship was stretched across miles of separation. So the long-distance phase was trying, filled with longing and the frustration of connecting through screens. Yet our foundation was solid, built on years of trust and understanding. We learned to communicate in new ways, keeping our connection alive through daily calls and texts, counting down the days until we could be together again. The decision for Brian to move states and join me was a testament to the strength of our commitment. But it was a leap of faith, leaving behind his established life to build a new one with me. I remember the day he arrived, his car filled with boxes and a hopeful smile gracing his lips. So it was a pivotal moment, one that marked the beginning of a new chapter for us. Now we live together in our own apartment, a cozy space that is distinctly ours. It's a place filled with laughter, occasional debates, and plans for the future that we cook together, experimenting with recipes and laughing at our culinary misadventures. Evenings are spent curled up on the couch, sharing our days or lost in a movie or book. So we support each other's careers, understanding the pressures and triumphs, always ready to offer encouragement or a listening ear. Brian is more than just my partner, he is my best friend, the person I plan to spend the rest of my life with. Our relationship is built on a deep mutual respect and love, on shared values and dreams. How we talk often about the future, about marriage and the life we hope to build. With each passing day, my anticipation for a proposal grows, not out of expectation, but from a deep-seated knowledge of our readiness to embark on that journey together. As I reflect on our relationship, from its humble beginnings on the university campus to the life we are building together, I am filled with gratitude. Gratitude for the laughter, the support, and the love that fills our days. It's a relationship rooted in friendship, strengthened by challenges, and blossoming with promise. In Brian, I have found a partner, a confidant, and a love that feels as destined as it is a profound. 
Brian's transition into a new job was a breath of fresh air after our reunion. As he adapted to his new role, his stories about work and colleagues became a regular part of our evening conversations. Among the names that started to pop up was Liz's. Initially, she was just another co-worker he mentioned in passing, a project they collaborated on, a shared laugh over a coffee break mishap. It was normal, the kind of workday interactions you'd expect in any office setting. The Liz seemed to quickly become a notable figure in his daily recounts. Liz has this incredible knack for organizing things, Brian would say, or Liz brought in these amazing muffins today. It was all very innocuous, the typical budding workplace friendship. I learned she had worked with an organization closely linked to mine, which added layers of small world charm to their interactions. She knows Sarah from your team, Brian mentioned one night, and I found it funny how interconnected our world seemed. So my reaction to Liz was shaped by trust, a trust that was deep-seated in the fabric of our relationship. Having seen Brian maintain friendships with women throughout our years together, I had little reason for concern. So he'd always been transparent about these friendships, and there had been several instances where he hung out with female friends without me. Each time, he shared his plans openly, often encouraging me to join if I was available. There was only ever one exception, a friend from his past that I hadn't felt comfortable about, but upon expressing my feelings, Brian immediately adjusted his boundaries with her. That gesture had solidified my trust further, reassuring me that our relationship came first. So this history laid a foundation of confidence as Liz became a more frequent topic. When Brian mentioned that Liz wanted to meet me, it felt like a positive step. She thinks that it'd be great to get all of us together, you know, a mini get-together, he suggested. So Liz's presence was introduced with the utmost normalcy. She was just a friend, a co-worker, and nothing more. She had a fiancé, and they were planning their life together, mirroring in some ways the life that Brian and I were building. So this parallel comforted me, painting Liz as someone who was walking a path similar to ours. And my comfort with the situation was a testament to the strength and openness of our relationship. So Brian's stories about Liz were transparent and regular, filled with mundane details and work-related anecdotes. So they brought a sense of normalcy to his new job environment, a place where he was still planting his roots. In the grand tapestry of our lives, Liz was just another thread, adding color and texture, but not disrupting the pattern we had so carefully woven together. As the week slipped by, a pattern began to emerge in our daily exchanges. Brian's new job was going well, and his enthusiasm was palpable, but so was the frequency of his mentions of Liz. It started subtly, comments about her contributions in meetings, her insights on projects they were working on together. You all, however, as days turned into weeks, Liz's presence in our conversations grew more pronounced. Then one evening, as we cleaned up after dinner, Brian brought up a new development. So Liz suggested we start carpooling, he said, drying a plate nonchalantly. He explained that Liz lived nearby in a temporary apartment due to her fiancé job, which often required them to relocate. That makes sense, you know. Um. Um. We're both heading the same way, and it could save us both some time and gas money. The office was about a 30-minute drive without traffic, but morning rush hour stretched it to nearly 45 minutes each way. I nodded, understanding the practicality of it, yet a knot formed in my stomach. Carpooling meant they would be spending at least an hour and a half together alone every day they headed into the office. My mind raced with questions I didn't voice. Would their conversations stray from work? Would this closeness breed a familiarity that edged into more personal territory? He mentioned it would only be for two to three days a week, depending on their office days and field work. It's just an idea for now, he assured me with a smile. I forced a smile back, pushing my unease aside. The first day, he actually picked her up. He mentioned it casually as he grabbed his keys. I'm, okay, I'm going to go pick up Liz and head into work. I was caught off guard, not realizing they had decided to start. When he returned home that evening, it was as if nothing out of the ordinary had occurred and he didn't bring it up again. According to him, it wasn't a regular arrangement, but the seed of discomfort had been planted. The situation escalated unexpectedly. While we were enjoying a quiet evening watching a movie, Brian casually mentioned that Liz and her fiance were looking for a more permanent place to live. They're actually interested in our building, he said, almost as an afterthought. They're coming to see it tomorrow. I paused the movie, turning to look at him. Our building was a coveted spot in downtown, known for its amenities and prime location, but it was also one of many, so the news unsettled me. The proximity felt too close for comfort. The next day, I saw them briefly in the elevator, being shown around by management. They were polite, and the meeting was brief, but the reality of them moving into our building started to sink in. So that evening, Brian received a text from Liz. They decided to rent here, he announced, a note of happiness in his voice that I couldn't mirror. The proximity meant more shared rides, more interactions, and an intimacy that was too close for my comfort. From then on, mentions of Liz weren't just frequent. They became a daily occurrence. They texted and called, discussing work or their apartments. Brian was transparent about these interactions, always open about the context of their conversations, yet the frequency made me uneasy. I didn't see his phone often, so the depth and tone of their exchanges were unknown to me, cloaked in the veil of work-related chats. As I lay in bed one night, staring at the ceiling, I couldn't help but feel a shift. The ease that once defined our evenings was now punctuated by the subtle presence of someone else. My mind raced with uncertainties and what-ifs. 
Was I being unreasonable? Was the threat I perceived real or just a shadow cast by overthinking? These thoughts swirled in my mind, a quiet storm brewing over what seemed like practical, innocent arrangements. The foundation of trust we had built our relationship upon was trembling under the weight of my insecurities, and I knew a conversation loomed on the horizon. A conversation where my fears and feelings would have to be voiced, where the strength of our relationship would be tested by the complexities of human connections and boundaries yet to be defined. So the unsettling feeling that had slowly begun to plant its roots within me started to sprout as days turned into weeks. It wasn't just the car rides anymore. Brian's phone would buzz more frequently than before, the screen lighting up with Liz's name. So they were small interactions, at least as Brian explained them, questions about a project or a quick confirmation about something work-related. Yet each buzz seemed to echo louder in the quiet of our shared space, ringing with the potential of something I couldn't quite name but felt deeply. So one afternoon stood out, a day when the thin veil of my discomfort was pierced by a moment so trivial yet so profound in its impact. So we were at my parents' house for a family lunch, a rare gathering that brought warmth and laughter into the late summer air. Amidst the clinking of cutlery and the hum of conversation, Brian's phone rang. He glanced at it, excused himself, and stepped out into the garden. I watched him through the window, phone to his ear, a frown of concentration etched across his face. So when he returned, sliding back into his seat as if nothing had happened, curiosity got the better of me. Who was it? I asked casually, passing him a bowl of salad. Oh, it was Liz. He responded without meeting my eyes. Just some questions because they were moving in at the time. The simplicity of his answer did nothing to soothe the flurry of questions swirling in my mind. Why hadn't he mentioned it right away? Was there a reason he needed to take the call outside? This incident lodged itself in my thoughts, a splinter that irritated with each passing moment. My trust, once solid and unwavering, now felt like a tapestry fraying at the edges, threads of doubt weaving through its once pristine surface. These feelings deepened a few days later when we drove Brian to the airport. As we approached the drop-off zone, I ventured a question, trying to keep my voice light. You're just taking an Uber back home, right? His hesitation was slight but noticeable. I was actually going to see if maybe Liz could pick me up, so I don't have to spend money on an Uber, he admitted, and I could hear the casual practicality in his voice, a stark contrast to the tightening in my chest. My response was measured, reminding him gently that Liz and her fiancé were busy moving. He considered this, nodding in agreement, and settled on the Uber instead. But the seed of discomfort had already sprouted into a gnarling vine, winding its way around my heart. So the ease with which he had thought to call Liz, his slight hesitation, and the potential implications of such a decision played over in my mind during the silent drive back home. In the solitude of our apartment, I found myself increasingly wrestling with my feelings. So the trust that I so cherished seemed to be under siege by these small, seemingly inconsequential moments. Each text, each call, each decision that subtly included Liz felt like a small chip away from the foundation we had built. So was I being unreasonable? Was my discomfort rooted in jealousy, or was it a signal of something more? A boundary being crossed without my consent? The internal debate was exhausting. Part of me wanted to dismiss these feelings, to chalk them up to overthinking, to the insecurity that perhaps all relationships face at one point or another. But another part, a more visceral, instinctive part, clung to these concerns with a tenacity that surprised me. It wasn't just about Liz, it was about us, about me and Brian and the invisible lines that define what is comfortable and what is not in our relationship. As the days passed, these thoughts did not ebb but grew stronger, fueled by each small interaction that Brian shared with Liz. I found myself observing him, watching for signs, for any indication that what I felt was grounded in reality, and not just in my fears. It was a silent vigil, one that kept me awake at night, my eyes tracing the shadows on the ceiling my mind replaying each day's interactions. After days of wrestling with my unease, I realized that silence was no longer an option. The weight of unspoken thoughts was too heavy, and it was time to clear the air for the sake of our relationship which I treasured above all. And one evening, as we sat side by side on our soft lived-in couch, I turned off the television, needing his full attention for this conversation. Brian, can we talk? My voice was shaky, betraying the nerves I felt. He looked at me, his expression turning serious as he muted the TV. Of course, what's up? I took a deep breath, searching for the right words. It's about Liz, I started hesitating slightly. I've been feeling a bit uncomfortable with how close you two have gotten recently. It's not that I don't trust you, but my voice trailed off, unsure how to express the turmoil inside without sounding accusatory. Brian turned to face me fully, his brows furrowed in concern. Hey, I didn't realize you felt that way. I'm sorry, it's just been work stuff, mostly. Liz is just a friend, you know that, right? I do, I really do. But it's not just the friendship, it's the time you spend together, carpooling, the phone calls. It feels like a lot, and sometimes I feel left out, I admitted, my heart pounding as I laid my vulnerabilities bare. He reached for my hand, squeezed 
squeezing it gently. I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to make you feel left out. Liz and I do talk about work, and since she's new in town, I guess I've been trying to make her feel welcome. I nodded, appreciating his honesty. I understand that, and I appreciate you helping her. But maybe we could all hang out together. I'd love to meet her fiance too. It might help me feel more comfortable about everything. Brian's face brightened at the suggestion. That's a great idea. I'll set something up. How about we all go out for drinks this weekend? Sounds perfect, I replied, feeling a weight lift off my shoulders. The mere act of discussing these feelings was like letting air out of a ballooning pressure inside me. The weekend came swiftly, and we met Liz and her fiance Tom at a local bar known for its cozy atmosphere and good music. The initial greetings were somewhat awkward, the air tinged with my own anxieties about how the evening would go. However, as we settled into our seats and ordered drinks, the conversation began to flow more naturally. Liz was warm and engaging, and Tom was friendly with a good sense of humor that complimented Brian's. Liz and I found common ground in our professional interests, and to my surprise, we shared a love for old jazz music, which the bar was softly playing in the background. You have great taste in music, Liz complimented, her smile genuine. Thanks, Brian mentioned you're planning your wedding. How's that going, I asked, genuinely interested. It's been fun, but hectic. Tom's been a huge help, though, Liz replied her eyes twinkling as she glanced at Tom, who gave a mock bow of acknowledgement. So as the night progressed, laughter filled our table. Any remnants of awkwardness dissolved into the mirth of discovering new friendships. Brian and Tom debated over sports, while Liz and I discussed everything from wedding plans to our favorite books. So by the end of the evening, it felt like we had all known each other for much longer than a few hours. Plans were made for future outings, and Brian and I walked home hand in hand, a new ease between us. Over the next few months, Liz and I grew closer. We started a routine of having lunch together once a week, and she and Tom often joined us for movie nights or weekend brunches. Our conversations meandered from professional topics to personal dreams and challenges. So Liz opened up about the struggles of moving frequently for Tom's job, and I shared my experiences of managing work-life balance. So one particularly memorable evening, we all participated in a local trivia night. Teamwork had never been so hilarious, with each of us bringing our quirks and knowledge to the table. We didn't win, but as we sat laughing over our absurdly wrong answers, I realized how deeply these new connections had enriched our lives. It wasn't just about getting to know Liz better, it was about understanding Brian's world from another perspective, about intertwining our lives with others in meaningful ways. My fears and insecurities had not just been eased, they had been transformed into opportunities for growth and friendship. Our relationships with Liz and Tom added new layers to our social dynamics, creating a supportive network that transcended mere acquaintance. It was during these months that I learned not just to trust Brian, but to trust in the resilience of our bond, understanding that it could stretch to include others without weakening. As I reflect on those initial fears, they seem like distant echoes now, overshadowed by the laughter, support, and camaraderie we've built together. It's strange how life unfolds, how situations that once seemed so daunting become the pathways to richer, more colorful experiences. In learning to voice my concerns and navigating through my insecurities, I found not just peace but a deeper connection to Brian and a friendship in Liz that I now cherish. So our story, marked by a simple conversation that one evening reminds me continually of the power of communication, honesty, and the willingness to embrace the unexpected. Update, it was an evening like no other. The sun had just set, painting the shades of pink and orange, as Brian and I headed out for what I thought was just another lovely dinner date. Day little did I know it was the night that would change our lives forever. As we arrived at the restaurant, I noticed Brian seemed unusually nervous, his hands slightly trembling as he held the door open for me. So the atmosphere was intimate a small, elegantly decorated place known for its incredible views of the city skyline. But over dinner, we reminisced about our journey together, from college friends to life partners, each memory laced with laughter and shared dreams. Despite the beautiful setting and perfect conversation, I couldn't help but notice Brian's distracted glances and the deep breaths he took as if bracing himself. I attributed it to work stress, not wanting to pry or disturb the evening's magic. When we returned home, the sight that greeted me left me breathless. Our apartment was transformed into a glowing sanctuary, adorned with hundreds of roses and candles that cast a romantic light across the walls. But my heart raced as I took in the scene, my hands covering my mouth in disbelief. There, in the midst of this fairy tale setting, Brian got down on one knee, his eyes shining with emotion. Will you marry me? He asked, his voice steady but filled with emotion. Tears welled up in my eyes as I nodded, whispering a joyful, yes. So we embraced, the candles flickering around us, and I felt a surge of love so strong it seemed to fill the entire room. So the next hours were a blur of happy tears, laughter, and excited phone calls to friends and family, sharing the news of our engagement. As the excitement of the evening settled, Brian shared with me how it all came together, revealing a surprise that made the night even more special. To Liz, his co-worker and our new friend, had been instrumental in planning the proposal. He explained that, because of her proximity, living just a few floors away in our building, he had been able to coordinate all the deliveries secretly. So the flowers, candles, champagne, and even the ring had been at Liz's apartment, safely hidden from my curious eyes. She even held on to the ring the week before I proposed. Brian chuckled, shaking his head in disbelief at the secrecy required. So I couldn't have pulled this off without her help. 
The following day, Liz came up to our apartment to congratulate us personally. Her eyes were misty as she hugged us both, and she took out her camera to capture the moment. It was then, seeing her genuine happiness for us, that I fully grasped the depth of her kindness and friendship. What I had initially perceived as a threat had blossomed into an invaluable bond. She had not only respected our relationship, but had actively helped celebrate it. This revelation was profound. It underscored how essential open communication had been throughout the entire process, from addressing my insecurities about their friendship to involving her in such a pivotal moment in our lives. It taught me that the fears and discomfort I had felt were natural, but that confronting them openly could lead to outcomes far beyond what I might have expected. Over the next few months, as Brian and I dove into wedding planning, Liz became an even greater part of our lives. We shared tips, vendor recommendations, and endless Pinterest boards. Our girls' nights became regular fixtures, filled with wedding talk and mutual support. Liz and I planned our weddings together, reveling in the joy of crafting our perfect days, and through it all, our friendship deepened. Looking back, I am amazed at how things unfolded. What began as a period of uncertainty and fear transformed into a chapter filled with love, friendship, and understanding. Liz and I, once potential rivals in my mind, were now allies and confidants, planning our future side by side. Brian's unwavering support and openness through every step reassured me of the unshakable foundation of our relationship. Our story, marked by moments of doubt and strengthened by communication, is a testament to the unpredictable nature of relationships. It is a reminder that the heart's capacity for love and forgiveness is boundless, and that sometimes those we perceive as threats can be our staunchest allies. But as I look forward to walking down the aisle next year, to say, I do, to the man who has been my best friend, my confidant, and now my fiance, I am filled with gratitude. Gratitude for the love that surrounds us, for the friends who support us, and for the unexpected twists in life that often lead to the most beautiful destinations. Lynn Liz's role in our engagement story is a beautiful reminder of how interconnected our lives are and how the power of community and friendship can elevate the most significant moments of our lives. Indeed, communication saves the day again, proving that when hearts are open and intentions clear, the bonds we form can lead us through any storm to a brighter, shared horizon.